just joining in. Uh, my name is Bob Flynn. I'm going to be talking to you guys about uh, about routing today. Uh, we'll give everybody just a minute, another minute or so to get situated. Uh, we'll get going at uh, two minutes after the hour, which is about a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and kick things off. So again, thanks everybody for joining me this morning. My name is Bob Flynn. I'm a, I'm a technical instructor here at Palo Alto Networks. I've been with Palo Alto for several years now, I think uh, a little over eight years now. And I've been able to see our portfolio grow from basically one product, our Palo Alto Networks Next Generation Firewall to our entire platform. We're gonna be talking about one piece of that today or one component or one piece of one component here. We're going to be talking about Prism Access and routing with Prism Access. So Prism Access is part of our SASE solution, our Secure Access Service Edge solution. The idea with this is to prevent a few different things that, that end up um, being problematic when it comes to working with Mobile users, people sitting at home, people sitting in an airport, sitting in a hotel, something like that, not inside an office, like many of us are, and uh, trying to get to corporate resources, internet access, things like that. The typical model for that is to have a remote access VPN that leads back to a data center with a huge big firewall or a device that can terminate uh, these remote access VPNs and send them out to the internet or back to talk to a remote office or data center or whatever. And all traffic has to backhaul back to the main data center. The second piece of this solution deals with branch offices what we like to call remote networks when it comes to Prisma access. So imagine you have a customer who's a convenience store branch or a coffee shop. Coffee shop's a good one. A uh, coffee shop brand with multiple different storefronts all over the world or all over the US or whatever. And you have Wi-Fi access and you need to have uh, like point of sale equipment and stuff like that, that, that reports back to uh, some location. Well, again, the legacy solution there is to have some sort of a lease line, an MPLS link, some sort of a, maybe a metered link or something like that, that again, backhauls all this traffic back to a central data center or maybe multiple data centers around the world. Again, long round trip times, especially these days where everybody's trying to get to the internet typically. I mean, most of your applications are internet-based, Salesforce and Workday and ServiceNow and uh, Google Drive and Google Docs and Gmail and all these sort of things that we use here at Palo Alto Networks are just like any other company. They're no longer sitting in a data center. They're up in the cloud. So backhauling all that traffic back to a main data center just to get out to the internet doesn't make much sense. So Prism Access solves these two issues by taking that firewall that was back at the big data center and moving it basically into the cloud close to your users, whether they're, whether they're in branch offices or storefronts, what we call remote networks, or whether they're sitting at home or sitting in a hotel room, mobile users. There's a lot to this product and we're not gonna be teaching you the, or talking about the entire product today. We're gonna to be talking about some routing things, routing best practices, uh, some routing considerations and some things like that. Uh, 
we'll be scratching the scratching the surface, giving you a little background on it. But at the end of this, we'll kind of talk about how you might want to take this entire course, uh, the EDU 318 course for Prisma Access, and that is available for employees free of charge. You just have to go to exceed LMS, uh, level up, log in and find a class you want to go to. And they're taught um, here in the US, but also in Europe. Uh, so you can probably find a time that's good for you, depending on where you are in the world or you know uh, what class is available and what dates and stuff like that. But maybe a little bit more about that at the end. Let's talk a little bit about routing with Prisma Access here. So first, a little bit of an overview. Some of the built-in routing that users, customers don't have to configure anything. It's automatically done. Then we'll start talking about a couple of different routing modes and, and some alternatives to traditional static or dynamic routing that we can do, traffic steering. The idea is that you have these, what we call RN SPNs, remote network SPNs. An SPN is a security processing node. It's there to do all the things that you traditionally think about with a Palo Alto Networks next gen firewall, uh, doing decryption and security policy rules for allows and denies and uh, content um, inspection, looking for threats, uh, hooking into a wildfire, all those sort of things that you expect on a traditional on-prem firewall, you'll see on the security processing nodes. And that's for these branch offices, what we call our remote networks. Again, let's say this is our coffee shop. And then for mobile users sitting at home, they access the internet or some other component within the Prism Access uh, enterprise here for, for, for this customer's deployment through an MUSPN, a mobile user SPN. There is another large piece that we'll be talking about today, and that's a corporate access node, a, a service connection corporate access node, an SCCAN. So our SPNs, think firewalls, uh, we have our CAN. Basically, think of that as our not a firewall. It's our think of it as a router and a IPsec termination point. And that usually goes uh, it connects a data center. The idea is if I got mobile users that need to get out to the internet they hit that security processing node, make sure everything's safe, and they go out to the internet. If they need to reach something inside the network, then they hit that security processing node, and then maybe you know go and talk to a user that's inside of a branch office or whatever the case may be. Or if there's something back at the data center, that they do need, they can go through the SPN, go through our internal routing and hit that data center. So depending on what they need to access, that these different paths. So all these pieces and parts are basically uh, use IPsec VPN tunnels to get from the ground up to these different cans or security processing nodes. Or in the case of a mobile user, it can be a VPN, uh, an SSL VPN connection or an IPsec. But on the internal side of stuff, with all these different pieces and parts that you may have, there are dynamic uh, VPN tunnels that are built automatically to mesh everything together so that we can route between all these different components um, using 
uh, our own internal BGP using self, uh, <coughs> excuse me, self-created VPN tunnels and IPsec tunnels to mesh everything together. There's nothing to configure or worry about but the stuff up in the cloud. The other things we have to worry about is, you know, uh, being able to route from say one branch office to another branch office and telling Prism Access how to get there. Or maybe determining we want to route outside of Prism Access. There's components to do that too. And we'll talk about all that as we go. Uh, so it can be a very simple configuration, very simple setup. Uh, not a whole lot of routing configuration to do, or we can make it a little more complex. And we'll talk about that. Now there are some licensing uh, options for Prism Access that are gonna give you the ability to either go straight from a remote network out to uh, the internet or mobile users to go straight out to the internet. And there's a licensing level that gives all the different pieces and parts, all the different components. If I go back to my little map here, uh, remote networks to be able to talk to mobile users, mobile users to be able to talk to data centers and remote networks and each other and all that sort of stuff that, that allows the communication between everybody. Uh, and so there's going to be different licensing levels and depending on what a customer wants, they can purchase the things that they want. Things that allow a mobile user to talk to, say, a user in a branch office uh, versus just going out to the internet, giving them the two different options here. It's called our interconnect, net interconnect, uh, which is part of the enterprise licensing. It's an add-on feature to that. So save money, it costs money. Uh, without the interconnect, then a mobile user can get out to the internet. So can users in a branch office. Uh, they can go down the service connections to get whatever they might need inside a data center, like maybe maybe that's where their authentication servers are, or maybe that's where their internal DNS servers are for DNS resolution. <laughs> Excuse me, typically some sort of service. Now, we're gonna take the two major components or, or the three major components we're talking about, the corporate access nodes, the CANs, and the remote network SPNs, RNSPNs. Again, for these branch offices, let's pretend these are we're a coffee company chain, and these are these are the storefronts. Um, and everybody's grabbing coffee on the way to work or whatever. Uh, all of the traffic, as I said, with with all the cloud components, uh, can route and take any any route it needs to take um, to transit from say point A, uh, branch A to branch B, or back to the data center, uh, take the fastest path uh, up in the cloud using um, <coughs> uh, gig speed, all that sort of stuff. But if I need some, say, someone in branch A to be able to talk to somebody in branch B, I need to somehow tell them that IP address range A is here, IP address range B is at this other site. So I know how to talk between IPs, ranges A and B, and I know where they live. So I need to use routing to do that. And I have a couple of different routing options to do that. We use static routing. We can integrate with a customer's existing BGP routing proto, uh, routing uh, setup. Uh, and we have the uh, some other options such as traffic steering that we're going to talk about. But anytime 
that I need inner branch connectivity or a mobile user that needs to talk down to a branch. I need to make sure I'm using the enterprise licensing model and I got the interconnect. All devices and all users have the ability uh, to connect down to a data center, uh, to that corporate access node, that CAN, uh, and to be able to get in from wherever they are down to whatever might be needed at the, at the branch. The only thing we need to have is just a list of the IP ranges that are available here in the data center. Uh, we basically can use static routes for that. Uh, but we can get fancy, as I said, use BGP, and we'll talk a little bit about that. One thing to understand is that uh, mobile users, you know, send it home, connected to Global Protect. Uh, my default behavior for these mobile user SPNs is to get users through a security stack, keep them safe, and take them out to the internet. For my mobile user to be able to talk to uh, a data center or a branch office or something like that, it needs to go where there's a writing table to tell it how to get to, you know, to, to uh, you know, the branch or the data center or, you know, another mobile user or whatever the case may be. And it's a corporate access node, the SC CAN, that is the router uh, that the mobile user uses. So a mobile user always has to bounce through this corporate access node in order to get to something else inside of Prisma Access. The idea of Prisma Access is basically everything within Prisma Access is, is the inside, it's the Prisma Access side. Anything outside of that is the internet, the wild west, the bad stuff. And what we wanna do is as people cross out to the internet, we need to make sure that they're safe. But for a mobile user to hit anything else within the world of, of their Prisma Access deployment, as you know, customer one is gonna have their deployment, customer two is gonna have theirs, customer three is gonna have theirs, and they're all separate. They need to bounce off this corporate access node. This corporate access node uh, primarily routes. And then remember we said we had that um, IPsec VPN connection uh, that, that goes from the ground up to these different pieces in the cloud. <clears throat> and so the other thing it does is it terminates VPNs. So even if I did not have anything in the data center that anybody needed, and even if I didn't have that tunnel, that service connection, I can still deploy a corporate access node and use it strictly as a router. In fact, if I ever need a mobile user to talk to something else inside of the Prism Access deployment, like a user in a branch office or something like that, then that's what I got to do. I have to have a corporate access node. You deploy all these pieces of Prisma Access close to where you need them. Uh, so there are basically uh, eight different regions in the world and several dozen in each location or a few in each location, uh, getting close to 200 different locations uh, in the world, we can do this. And the idea is that let's say I got a branch office in, I don't know, um, San Francisco. You know, maybe it's, like I said, it's a coffee store, something like that. And um, there's gonna be a location 
in the cloud close to San Francisco where I can spin up this RNSPN. And let's say I got mobile users sitting in Boston. Uh, there's going to be a location I can spin up this mobile user SPN in New England somewhere, uh, probably Boston. Uh, so the round trip time to get up into Prism Access is going to be short because we're as close as we can be. And let's say my service connection uh, with the data center. Let's say that's in Dallas, Texas. Uh, so I got some stuff on the West Coast, stuff on the East Coast, stuff central to the U.S. Uh, great, but let's say we got a different situation. Uh, if we got multiple data centers, uh, the devices, uh, whenever they need a routing table, are going to go to the closest one, that closest corporate access node, uh, which is great if you're talking about, all right, we're all sitting here in the in North America. That works out all right. But what if I got a situation where I got that corporate access node acting as my router for my mobile users, and now I got people in North America, you know, like I said, East Coast, West Coast, Central, and I got people in Europe too on the right-hand side. So let's say I got a mobile user in, I don't know, Frankfurt, Germany, needs to talk to uh, somebody at a branch office in Paris. Uh, you know, geographically, talking about hundreds of miles apart, not, not too far. But uh, my mobile user, in order to get to my branch office, that's you know, 100 miles away, 200 miles away, 300 miles away, is going to end up having to hit this corporate access node all the way back in Dallas in order to find out how to get to that branch office. Well, that ends up being kind of counterproductive. The whole idea of Prism Access is not to backhaul all the traffic halfway around the world. So one of the cool things I can do when it comes to routing with Prism Access is I can um, throw a Prisma um, uh, service connection, a uh, CAN, a corporate access node. And I don't have to have an, anything on the ground that's terminating to. I can just use it as a router, a cloud-based router that can now get me directly where I need to be without having to go halfway around the world and halfway back. Cool stuff. <clears throat> By the way, folks, if you have any questions, comments, anything uh, as we go along, we will have a little QA period at the end, but I'm happy if you want to sort of ask as we go, that works too. Uh, but uh, but we will have a a designated Q and A. But feel free to feel free to interrupt me any old time. Doesn't, doesn't bother me. So we kind of set the table here. We got we got these cloud based tools. These these nodes. We got the security processing nodes for our mobile users and our remote office users. We got our corporate access node, our CAN for data centers or for routing. And we kind of talked about the um, dynamic routing that, that's done in the cloud between all these different nodes. But again, remember we have to define what IP ranges are gonna be available at these different branches uh, and at the data centers in order for our routers to work and know what's, what, what's going on. So we have the ability to, to, to do two different um, uh, overall routing protocols, static routes and BGP for dynamic routing. 
the use case for integrating with BGP would be if you have a customer that already has a existing uh, environment where they use BGP prior to us coming into the picture and they want us to just integrate with what they already got. Otherwise, you're probably using static routes. But to hook into a customer's existing BGP configuration uh, is very simple with Prisma Access. But now it gives us actually a couple other things to think about. Uh, he's in our default routing model, which keeps everything up in the cloud as long as possible, because that's where your good performance is going to be. Uh, or hot potato routing. And hot potato routing basically pushes um, traffic down into the customer's network as quickly as possible. And then if I'm going, say, between one branch office and another one, one remote network and another one, I'm going to be transiting uh, that customer's routing infrastructure to do it, probably using BGP. Kind of see how these two different um, different things work. A couple of examples. So here I've got um, a uh, traffic on uh, three different um, three different continents. I've got, say, a remote office in Asia, one in Europe, one in the US, or in SPNs. They have um, data centers, service connections in each region. So I got uh, X, Y, and Z here. If I got a user in a branch office in the US that needs to talk to somebody in, in Europe at another branch office, uh, the default behavior is going to be that I'm going to, um, I'm sitting in my branch office, I'm going to hit my remote network, SBN, I'm going to be routed to the European uh, SPN and the corporate access node for routing there. And then I'm gonna to go to the ground and talk to whoever I need to talk to at the ground there. So the trans, transit from the US through Europe is all done in the cloud. That's our default model. Uh, we'll call COPE, COPE today our, our default routing model. And there's nothing, nothing extra you have to do for all this. But if you're doing hot potato routing, the behavior is gonna be a little bit different. So now I'm sitting in my office again. I hit my security processing node, my R and SPN, and I'm headed over here to talk to somebody in Europe. Well, with the hot potato routing, we're gonna get into the customer's routing infrastructure as fast as possible. So what happens is I end up going back down my service connection uh, into the data center uh, and routing across the customer's BGP uh, backbone to get to the and then return traffic would follow the same route, keep everything uh, symmetrical. So in the first example, I'm using the cloud. Second example, I'm basically bouncing into the cloud back down and across the existing infrastructure. Uh, typically, this would be like some sort of a SD-WAN deployment. 
uh, could be ours, Prism SD-WAN, it could be third party, it could be legacy stuff, but they would typically be running BGP. And so each branch, each remote network is gonna advertise the IP ranges that are available there. And that's what all these little numbers down here are. Like uh, one nine, like uh, over here in the US, uh, 192.168.48.0/24. There's a number after that, 65534. That's the AES number for BGP, the autonomous system. Uh, basically, the the devices that are going to um, that are going to be participating in BGP, uh, and we can tie in with the customer's infrastructure, either using static routes or using or integrating into BGP. Um, but static routes, all we do is when we bring up any sort of um, node, in this case, I'm bringing up a service connection. And I give it whatever name I want. And I couldn't think of a cool name, so I just called it service connection. Um, I'm can figure all my stuff from my IPsec tunnel to connect to that service connection that SC can. And I can either do static routes or BGP. I can also do QoS, but that's a different conversation. Uh, static routes, I just literally add a routes here. You know, like maybe I've got a, a 192.168.1.0 slash 20. It's 10.10.1.0 slash 24. Uh, I got some servers. That are in the 172.16 networks. So I can put all these different IP ranges here. BGP, if I click that second uh, tab there for routing for BGP, well, <clears throat> then I have the ability to uh, set up that autonomous system, that AS. Uh, and the idea is you have peers, you have uh, one routing device that talks to another routing device. And uh, they will create typically a um, secure connection to do that. Uh, you're gonna have, um, they're gonna have addresses, peer addresses, and say, hey, this is the guy I talked to, this is the device I talked to. And the other device can be peered with me and usually something else too. You know, usually, usually peering between something upstream and downstream. And any sort of um, secrets, i.e. passwords and stuff like that, that you want. Uh, there are some other options, advanced options when it comes to BGP, uh, dealing with uh, which way you wanna advertise uh, routes just in one direction or another direction. Uh, and some things like that, that that are part of a conversation about BGP in general. Uh, this is not about BGP in general, it's about how Prisma Access integrates with BGP. And so the integration is relatively simple. Uh, once you are integrated and connected into your customer's BGP integration, um, you're, you can go to the status tab in Panorama or you go, it's actually the panorama tab, but you go into the status section there. And there is a whole um, screen uh, showing your BGP uh, status. And you can see the peer IP addresses and the autonomous systems, the AESs. Uh, you can see what uh, community um, string that we are advertising. Uh, you can see the updates coming in and all kinds of details such as that. But the use case for using BGP is your customer's already got all this set up. And all we wanna do is integrate in there and become part of it. So all we have to do is hook into what they already have and become a participant in it. Otherwise we just use the static routes. And there's no call to be a BGP expert or anything to be able to do this. 
customer, if they're using BGP, they're probably pretty good at it or they've hired an expert to do it for them. Uh, in which case, all you're doing is hooking into their stuff, figuring out what the peer AS is and peer IDs, all that sort of stuff, or peer addresses. So pretty, pretty simple. So all of this is using routes. And when you're routing, whether it's static routes or BGP, uh, dynamic routing, you are routing based upon the destination IP address that you're headed to. So if we look at a packet on layer three of the OSI model, it's got a packet header. The packet header has source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, and protocol, TCP or UDP. Um, we're looking at the destination IP address. You're saying, okay, I'm coming from this IP address and I'm trying to go to google.com. Uh, so the destination address in my packet header is going to be an address for google.com. With traffic steering, all of a sudden, we can look at other stuff besides just the destination IP address to make a decision as to what direction or how to get to where we need to go. And we had the ability to um, look at things uh, such as IPs, source or destination now, we have port numbers, uh, we can look at app IDs, as you know, how all the networks, we, we're layer seven, app IDs. Um, we look at users and we can make decisions on forwarding traffic one way or another. In other words, you know, maybe using, uh, maybe uh, using static routes to get from branch A to branch B, using dynamic routing to get to uh, the data center and halfway around the world and going straight out the internet for other stuff. And it's just a matter of um, telling us how you want to treat this traffic using these traffic steering rules. Um, oh, I'm going the wrong way here. Yeah, here we go. Um, so, we use traffic forwarding rules in order to set up this traffic steering. If we want to use information other than just a destination address, this is how we can do it. When would you do this? Well, as I said, if you need different traffic to go to different places based on something other than just the destination address, this gives you that ability. So for instance, you know, my mobile users, uh, when they go through their MUSPN and their Prism Access, by default, they're headed out to the internet. So if I had uh, some traffic and needed to go back to headquarters, go back to a data center, I need to define that traffic. Well, typically I can just define it by the destination IP address. Is it destined to headquarters or goes to headquarters? But let's say it's something that ultimately goes out to the internet. So like, uh, yeah, I'm using Google. I'm gonna um, open my browser, go to Google and search for something, uh, some movie I wanna go see or, you know, whatever, some news article or whatever. I'm gonna do Google search for it. <clears throat> well, typically, and go this way. But what I could say is, you know what? If it's web browsing traffic, I want to first send it back to headquarters through, say, my existing firewall uh, before I send it out to the internet. Well, I couldn't do that with routing because my destination IP is going to point this way. Uh, so I got to use something else so I can use traffic steering. 
to look at the ports or the application and say, yeah, that's stuff I want to send this way. Which now gives me the ability to have some traffic go to headquarters before it goes out to the internet. Other traffic goes straight out to the internet. So I'm saying there's lots of different uh, match criteria we can use. Source IPs, user IDs, so source user, and we map an IP address to a user. Uh, destination IPs, which is basically just regular routing. Uh, URLs or custom URL categories. So the, the other way I could have done that is saying, if someone's going to google.com, then they go back through the headquarters. And if they're going to say yahoo.com, then they go straight out to the internet, as an example. Uh, service type, um, TCP, UDP, uh, port numbers. Uh, there's some map IDs we can use. Um, and then we define, once we define what we're looking for and what we're defining, we define where we want it to go. So uh, do I want to go, you know, back down a service connection to a data center or do I want it to go straight out to the internet through Prisma access? And I can do this for mobile users and remote networks. And it's just a matter of setting up rules to do that. So first of all, I got to define these different service connections that I might want to use. And again, I might want to say, well, you know, European users, if I'm sending you back to the data center, use the one in Europe. People in the US, if I'm sending you back to your data center, use the one in the US, or maybe I got two of them or whatever. So I create these source connection groups to define my different uh, data centers. And then um, I can have multiple different ones. And then I define what sort of traffic I'm gonna be looking for. So in the source tab here, I can have source IP, source user, um, source port, destination. I can have destination IP, destination port. Um, I can have uh, the URLs, custom URL categories, services. I can have port numbers and I choose they want to forward this to one of my data center groups that I created or straight out to the internet. Now, remember anything we send out of the internet is going to go through that security processing node. Uh, the use case might be that I have something additional at the data center uh, that I'm not doing in my security processing node. Uh, that would cause me to want to take it back to a data center. You know, maybe I'm doing um, um, maybe I'm using a third party IPS signatures like the Symantec or something like that. So uh, we don't have, we have our own internal signatures on our security processing nodes, uh, on our firewalls, on all of our products. And maybe I need to use a third party so that would be my use case to want to go uh, back to a data center instead of using the security that's in the security processing node. In any case, um, you create these rules, these traffic steering rules to define the traffic and which way you want to put them. And they can be pretty simple, or you can stack together multiple ones for all kinds of different things. Um, maybe have some users and some sort of traffic that I want to send through a data center versus directly between to users or um, scrub it through a security processing node before it goes out to the internet, uh, do something like that. So I have the way to do that. 
Uh, my mobile users would typically, if they're going to use Office 365, it goes straight out to the internet. They go through an MUSPN and out to the internet. And we do all of our security on the MUSPNs. Uh, but maybe um, I got users in the in uh, different data centers and things like that uh, that need to go out to the internet. Uh, they're going to be using probably an on-premise firewall uh, to get out to the internet. And so they would take a different path. It wouldn't be going through a security processing node, but through a firewall on the ground, which could be ours or it could be a third party one. Uh, we may want to push Office 365 traffic uh, straight to the internet instead of down to a data center. So we don't have to go through a security process and node through a CAN to a data center and then back out to the internet. Uh, if that's the way all of our traffic's going, let's say to for Office 365, I want to create an exemption to say, no, you just go straight out uh, through the security processing node, but, but not back to the data center. So we can make that happen. We can define what traffic we want to send to the data center or what traffic we don't. And then whatever's left is going to go the other way. So these can get uh, rather um, rather granular and rather, um, well, maybe even complicated. Uh, you know, instead of splitting traffic one way or two ways, three different things, we want to split three different ways. Yeah, we can accomplish that too. Uh, so we have the way to make pretty sophisticated traffic reporting situations and rules, it's all pretty simple. It's where it's coming from, who it's coming from, where it's going to, and what path we want it to take. Uh, it's a matter of having multiple traffic forwarding rules to do that. And this is an example where we got three of them. We got some traffic uh, going straight out to the internet through a SPN. We got some traffic going down to a data center through a firewall back out to the internet. And then we got some SaaS applications that we are uh, pushing a different path to get to. So again, to find how you find this traffic, you know, what's different about the traffic? Is it, um, what port numbers is it using? What's its destination IP address? You know, where's the traffic coming from? Maybe that's the defining thing, the user or the source IP. Uh, and configuring this, an alternate path, and you do that by configuring that service connection, saying, I want to go this direction instead of what I normally do. And then uh, creating the forwarding rules to make it happen. But by default, anything is going to go through our stuff in Prisma Access, through those security processing nodes, and through the corporate access nodes, kind of where the traffic's headed. Uh, this is, we use this if we want to make stuff go a different direction than normally would. So that brings us to the end of our little discussion about routing. Uh, as I said, this is sort of one little topic in one of our classes, our Prisma Access class, our EDU 318 class, which I would um, recommend everybody sign up for and take. It's uh, really cool if you want to find out more, you know, more about SPNs and CANs and more about uh, mobile users and more about remote users, more about all of this. Uh, and get your hands on it.